Accelerated Graphics Port is a parallel expansion card standard, designed for attaching a video card to a computer system to assist in the acceleration of 3D computer graphics. It was originally designed as a successor to PCI type connections for video cards. Since 2004, AGP has been progressively phased out in favor of PCI Express, which is serial, as opposed to parallel. By mid-2008, PCI Express cards dominated the market and only a few AGP models were available. With GPU manufacturers and add-in board partners eventually dropping support for the interface in favor of PCI Express. As computers increasingly became graphically oriented, successive generations of graphics adapters began to push the limits of PCI, a bus with shared bandwidth. This led to the development of AGP, a bus dedicated to graphics adapters. AGP is heavily based on PCI, and in fact the AGP bus is a superset of the conventional PCI bus, and AGP cards must act as PCI cards. The primary advantage of AGP over PCI is that it provides a dedicated pathway between the slot and the processor rather than sharing the PCI bus. In addition to a lack of contention for the bus, the direct connection allows for higher clock speeds. The second major change is that AGP uses split transactions, where the address and data phases of a PCI transaction are separated. The card may send many address phases, and the host processes them in order. This avoids long delays, with the bus idle during read operations. Third, PCI bus handshaking is simplified. Unlike PCI bus transactions whose length is negotiated on a cycle-by-cycle -cycle basis using the frame hash and stop hash signals, AGP transfers are always a multiple of 8 bytes long, and the total length is included in the request. Further, rather than using the ERDI hash and TRDY hash signals for each word, data is transferred in blocks of 4 clock cycles, and pauses are allowed only between blocks. Finally, AGP allows sideband addressing, meaning that the address and data buses are separated so the address phase does not use the main address slash data lines at all. This is done by adding an extra 8-bit sideband address bus over which the graphics controller can issue new AGP requests while other AGP data is flowing over the main 32 address slash data lines. This results in improved overall AGP data throughput. This great improvement in memory read performance makes it practical for an AGP card to read textures directly from system RAM, while a PCI graphics card must copy it from system RAM to the card's video memory. System memory is made available using the graphics address remapping table, which apportions main memory as needed for texture storage. The maximum amount of system memory available to AGP is defined as the AGP aperture. An AGP card The AGP slot first appeared on x86 compatible system boards based on socket 7 Intel P5 Pentium and slot 1 P6 Pentium 2 processors. Intel introduced AGP support with the i440LX slot 1 chipset on August 26, 1997, and a flood of products followed from all the major system board vendors. The first socket 7 chipsets to support AGP were the VIA Apollo VP3, SIS 5591-5592, and the Ali Aladdin V Intel never released an AGP-equipped socket 7 chipset. FIC demonstrated the first Socket 7 AGP system board in November 1997 as the FIC PA2012 based on the VIA Apollo VP3 chipset, followed very quickly by the Epox P55 VP3 also based on the VIA VP3 chipset which was first to market. Early video chipsets featuring AGP support included the rendition Verite V2200, 3DFX Voodoo Banshee, NVIDIA Riva 128, 3DLABS Promedia 2, Intel i740, ATI RAGE Series, Matrox Millennium 2, and S3 VI RGE GX-2. Some early AGP boards used graphics processors built around PCI and were simply bridged to AGP. This resulted in the cards benefiting little from the new bus. With the only improvement used being the 66 MHz bus clock, with its resulting doubled bandwidth over PCI, and bus exclusivity. Examples of such cards were the Voodoo Banshee, Verite V2200, Millennium 2, and S3 VI RGE GX-2. Intel's i740 was explicitly designed to exploit the new AGP feature set. In fact it was designed to texture only from AGP memory, making PCI versions of the board difficult to implement. Microsoft first introduced AGP support into Windows 95 OEM Service Release 2 via the USB supplement to OSR2 patch. After applying the patch the Windows 95 system became Windows 95 version 4.00. 950B. 
The first Windows NT-based operating system to receive AGP support was Windows NT 4.0 with Service Pack 3, introduced in 1997. Linux support for AGP-enhanced fast data transfers was first added in 1999 with the implementation of the AGP Cart kernel module. Intel released AGP Specification 1.0 in 1997. It specified 3. 3 V-signals and 1 times and 2 times speeds. Specification 2. 0 documented 1. 5 V-signaling, which could be used at 1 times, 2 times and the additional 4 times speed and 3. 0 added 0. 8 V signaling, which could be operated at 4 times and 8 times speeds. Available versions are listed in the adjacent table. AGP version 3. 5 is only publicly mentioned by Microsoft under Universal Accelerated Graphics Port, which specifies mandatory supports of extra registers once marked optional under AGP 3. 0. Upgraded registers include PSYSTS, CAPTR, CAPID, AGSTAT, AGCHEMD, NISTAT, NISMD. New required registers include AppBaselo, AppBase, AgCurl, AppSize, NEP, Cartlo, Garthi. There are various physical interfaces, see the compatibility section. AGP Graphics Card AGP Pro Graphics Card AGP Pro an official extension for cards that required more electrical power, with a longer slot with additional pins for that purpose. AGP Pro cards were usually workstation class cards used to accelerate professional computer-aided design applications employed in the fields of architecture, machining, engineering, simulations, and similar fields. 64-bit AGP A 64-bit channel was once proposed as an optional standard for AGP 3.0 in draft documents, but it was dropped in the final version of the standard. The standard allows 64-bit transfer for AGP 8 times reads, writes, and fast writes. 32-bit transfer for PCI operations. A number of non-standard variations of the AGP interface have been produced by manufacturers. Internal AGP interface PCI-based AGP ports PC-based AGP ports compatibility, AGP keys on card, on-slot AGP cards are backward and forward compatible within limits. 1. 5 The only keyed cards will not go into 3. 3 V slots and vice versa, though universal cards exist which will fit into either type of slot. There are also unkeyed universal slots that will accept either type of card. When an AGP universal card is plugged into an AGP universal slot, only the one 5V portion of the card is used. Some cards, like NVIDIA's GeForce 6 series or ATI's Radeon X800 series, only have keys for one 5V to prevent them from being installed in older mainboards without one 5V support. Some of the last modern cards with three 3V support were the NVIDIA GeForce FX series, certain GeForce 6 series and 7 series, few cards. Were made with 3.3V support except for 6200 where 3.3V support was common, and the ATI Radeon 9500-9700-9800. Some GeForce 6200-6600-6800 and GeForce 7300-7600-7800-7950 cards, will function with AGP-1. Zero slots, but those are really uncommon compared to their AGP-1. 5V only versions. AGP Pro cards will not fit into standard slots, but standard AGP cards will work in a Pro slot. Motherboards equipped with a universal AGP Pro slot will accept a 1. 5V or 3. 3V card in either the AGP Pro or a standard AGP configuration, a universal AGP card, or a universal AGP Pro card. Some cards incorrectly have dual notches, and some motherboards incorrectly have fully open slots allowing a card to be plugged into a slot that does not support the correct signaling voltage, which may damage card or motherboard. Some incorrectly designed older 3. 3V cards have the 1. 5V key. There are some proprietary systems incompatible with standard AGP. For example, Apple Power Macintosh computers with the Apple Display Connector have an extra connector which delivers power to the attached display. Some cards designed to work with a specific CPU architecture may not work with others due to firmware issues. Mark Allen of PlayTools.com made the following comments regarding practical AGP compatibility for AGP 3.0 and AGP 2.0. Nobody makes AGP 3.0 cards, and nobody makes AGP 3.0 motherboards. At least not any manufacturers I can find. 
every single video card I could find which claimed to be an AGP 3.0. Card was actually a universal 1.5 volts AGP 3.0 card. And every motherboard which claimed to be an AGP 3.0 motherboard turned out to be a universal 1.5 volts AGP 3.0 motherboard. It makes sense. If you think about it, because if anyone actually shipped a consumer-oriented product which supported only 0.8 volts, they would end up with lots of confused customers and a support nightmare. In the consumer market, you'd have to be crazy to ship a 0.8 volt only product. Actual power supplied by an AGP slot depends upon the card used. The maximum current drawn from the various rails is given in the specifications for the various versions. For example, if maximum current is drawn from all supplies and all voltages are at their specified upper limits, an AGP 3.0 slot can supply up to 48. 25 watts, this figure can be used to specify a power supply conservatively, but in practice a card is unlikely ever to draw more than 40W from the slot, with many using less. AGP Pro provides additional power up to 110W. Many AGP cards had additional power connectors to supply them with more power than the slot could provide. By 2010, few new motherboards had AGP slots. No new motherboard chipsets were equipped with AGP support but motherboards continued to be produced with older chipsets with support for AGP. Graphics processors of this period use PCI Express. A general-purpose standard that supports higher data transfer rates and full duplex. To create AGP-compatible graphics cards, those chips require an additional PC to AGP bridge chip to convert C signals to and from AGP signals. This incurs additional board costs due to the need for the additional bridge chip and for a separate AGP design circuit board. Various manufacturers of graphics cards continued to produce AGP cards for the shrinking AGP user base. The first bridged cards were the GeForce 6600 and ATI Radeon X800 XL boards, released during 2004 to 2005. In 2009 AGP cards from NVIDIA had a ceiling of the GeForce 7 series. In 2011 DirectX 10 capable AGP cards from AMD vendors included the Radeon HD 2400, 3450, 3650, 3850, 4350, 4650, and 4670. The HD5000 AGP series mentioned in the AMD Catalyst software was never available. There were many problems with the AMD Catalyst 11. 2 to 11. 6 AGP hotfix drivers under Windows 7 with the HD4000 series AGP video cards. Use of 10. 12 or 11. 1 AGP hotfix drivers is the recommended workaround. Several of the vendors listed above make available past versions of the AGP drivers. In 2016, Windows 10 version 1607 drops support for AGP video cards making Windows 10 1511 the last Windows release to support AGP. AGP support removal in future Linux kernel and drivers was also considered as well. An AGP bus is a superset of a 66 MHz conventional PCI bus and, immediately after reset, follows the same protocol. The card must act as a PCI target, and optionally may act as a PCI master. After the card is initialized using PCI transactions, AGP transactions are permitted. For these, the card is always the AGP master and the motherboard is always the AGP target. The card queues multiple requests which correspond to the PCI address phase, and the motherboard schedules the corresponding data phases later. An important part of initialization is telling the card the maximum number of outstanding AGP requests, which may be queued at a given time. AGP requests are similar to PCI memory read and write requests, but use a different encoding on command line C slash B3 colon 0, and are always 8 byte aligned, their starting address and length are always multiples of 8 bytes. The three low-order bits of the address are used instead to communicate the length of the request. Whenever the PCI GNT hash signal is asserted, granting the bus to the card, three additional status bits ST2 colon 0 indicate the type of transfer to be performed next. If the bits are 0xx, a previously queued AGP transactions data is to be transferred. If the three bits are 111, the card may begin a PCI transaction or queue a request in band using pipe hash. Like PCI, each AGP transaction begins with an address phase, communicating in an address and 4-bit command code. The possible commands are different from PCI, however, AGP 3. 
zero drop high priority requests and the long red commands, as they were little used. It also mandated sideband addressing, thus dropping the dual address cycle, leaving only four request types, low priority read, low priority write, flush and fence. To queue a request in band, the card must request the bus using the standard PCI rec hash signal, and receive GNT hash plus bus status ST2 colon 0 equal to 111. Then, instead of asserting frame hash to begin a PCI transaction, the card asserts the pipe hash signal while driving the AGP command, address, and length on the C slash B3 colon 0, AD, 31 to 3, and AD, 2 colon 0, lines, respectively. For every cycle that pipe hash is asserted, the card sends another request without waiting for acknowledgement from the motherboard, up to the configured maximum queue depth. The last cycle is marked by deasserting rec hash, and pipe hash is deasserted on the following idle cycle. If sideband addressing is supported and configured, the pipe hash signal is not used. Instead, requests are broken into 16 bit pieces which are sent as two bytes across the SBA bus. There is no need for the card to ask permission from the motherboard. A new request may be sent at any time as long as the number of outstanding requests is within the configured maximum queue depth. The possible values are, sideband address bytes are sent at the same rate as data transfers, up to 8 times the 66 MHz basic bus clock. Sideband addressing has the advantage that it mostly eliminates the need for turnaround cycles on the AD bus between transfers, in the usual case when read operations greatly outnumber writes. While asserting GNT hash, the motherboard may instead indicate via the ST bits that a data phase for a queued request will be performed next. There are four queues, two priorities for each of reads and writes, and each is processed in order. Obviously, the motherboard will attempt to complete high priority requests first, but there is no limit on the number of low priority responses which may be delivered while the high priority request is processed. For each cycle when the GNT hash is asserted and the status bits have the value OOP, a read response of the indicated priority is scheduled to be returned. At the next available opportunity, the motherboard will assert TRDY hash and begin transferring the response to the oldest request in the indicated read queue. Up to four clock cycles worth of data are transferred without waiting for acknowledgement from the card. If the response is longer than that, both the card and motherboard must indicate their ability to continue on the third cycle by asserting ERTI hash and TRDY hash, respectively. If either one does not, Wait states will be inserted until two cycles after they both do. The C slash B hash byte enable lines may be ignored during read responses, but are held asserted by the motherboard. The card may also assert the RBF hash signal to indicate that it is temporarily unable to receive more low priority read responses. The motherboard will refrain from scheduling any more low priority read responses. The card must still be able to receive the end of the current response and the first four cycle block of the following one if scheduled plus any high-priority responses it has requested. For each cycle when GNT hash is asserted and the status bits have the value of 1p, write data is scheduled to be sent across the bus. At the next available opportunity, the card will assert ERTI hash and begin transferring the data portion of the oldest request in the indicated write queue. If the data is longer than 4 clock cycles, the motherboard will indicate its ability to continue by asserting TRDY hash on the third cycle. Unlike reads, there is no provision for the card to delay the write. If it didn't have the data ready to send, it shouldn't have queued the request. The C slash B hash lines are used with write data and may be used by the card to select which bytes should be written to memory. The multiplier in AGP 2 times, 4 times and 8 times indicates the number of data transfers across the bus during each 66 MHz clock cycle. Such transfers use source synchronous clocking with a strobe signal generated by the data source. AGP 4 times adds complementary strobe signals. Because AGP transactions may be as short as two transfers, at AGP 4 times and 8 times speeds it is possible for a request to complete in the middle of a clock cycle. In such a case, the cycle is padded with dummy data transfers. The AGP connector contains almost all PCI signals, plus several additions. The connector has 66 contacts on each side, although four are removed for each keying notch. Pin 1 is closest to the I.O. bracket, and the B and A sides are as in the table, looking down at the motherboard connector. Contacts are spaced at 1 mm intervals, however they are arranged in two staggered vertical rows so that there is 2 mm space between pins in each row. Odd-numbered A side contacts, and even numbered B side contacts are in the lower row. The others are in the upper row. PCI signals emitted are, 
Signals added are. Thanks for watching.